So lots of people requested me to do this particular video on how to get started with cyber security or in cyber security in Nigeria. Because so many people really in Nigeria want to get into cyber security or maybe not so many, but some people want to get into cyber security and they don't know how to get into cyber security because there are not lots of videos that um, teach them this or tell them this. And cyber security, it's sort of different like cyber security in nigeria and cyber security in other countries it's different the reason i said it's different is because united states of america for example has been doing cyber security for a long time since the 1980s when they had their first hack and all so it's something that has been a part of them unlike nigeria that is still trying to inculcate cyber security so it's sort of new so people want to know is there a market for it are there jobs um, are there, where can I study it? Are there universities that offer it? So I'll just be giving you my own um, experience on getting started with cyber security, what worked for me and um, the job I have. Just I'll just be giving you everything you need to know in terms of getting started with cyber security in Nigeria. So hopefully it also helps those in Africa and for those abroad too that might want to watch, let's get started. So the first question people usually ask me is, must I have a sort of um, computer science degree or computer science background before starting cybersecurity? Like, must I do um, BSc computer science or BSc mathematics or BSc in a related field? Well, the answer is yes and no. The reason I said yes and no is because it is like a plus. It is like a an, it is like an add-on if you studied um, um, computer science before getting into cyber security. It should just give you, um, it must have given you the basic knowledge in terms of computers and how they work, okay? But it does not mean, I've seen people that studied marine science, I've seen people that studied very unrelated fields go into cyber security and yet excel and they are, they are one of the top people, even greater than me by far in terms of um, cyber security. So, don't let um, not studying cyber not studying cyber security or not studying computer science it shouldn't restrict you. If you studied computer science, if you studied mathematics, if you studied um, systems engineering, if you studied electronics, if you studied other related mathematics and some of these other related fields, you should have um, a background in computer science because in all these fields or in all these courses I called or mentioned, they usually do computer science in those um, courses or in those programs, in those undergraduate programs. So I'm sure you've seen why I said yes or no. It's not really compulsory, but it's good if you have the background. So for those that have not done their BSc, you've not done your undergraduate and you're thinking, oh, I want to get into cybersecurity, should I um, study computer science? Well, yes, you can go ahead and do that. It's advisable, okay? It's an, it's an add-on, it's a plus on your side. So there are several, for those in Nigeria, there are several universities or several undergraduate, um, undergraduate institutions that offer cyber security as a course. There are more than, there are more than um, five, but I'll just mention five to you. The five that I'm very sure of or that I know about, there's um, two of them are private institutions, while the other three are um, government institutions or public institutions. So, Futo, Futa, um, Covenant, Babcock University. These are universities that that um, do cyber security as a program. So you can say you study cyber security in your undergraduate level, okay? So you can go ahead and research for other universities in Nigeria. But for University of Lagos, they are not yet doing cyber security as a program. Though in computer science or in computer science, in one of their courses, they have cyber security as a course in um, in lab computer science. So. If you want to get into cyber security and you want to go to in like it shouldn't stop you because they are not doing cyber security as a course. Okay, it's something they are still trying to put in their curriculum. It's still something they are trying to put in their um, in the institution as a course on its own. But now you need, but um, at the moment in like is not doing cyber security as a program on its own. Okay, but you can go ahead and do computer science. So that has answered that particular question. If you are not, if you have not yet done um, an undergraduate degree, go ahead and do cyber security as an undergraduate program or computer science related um, programs. And also, it is very important to know that age does not matter when getting into cyber security. You can get into cyber security at any age, any age. So the second question that people usually ask me is: programming necessary? Is it important to know programming 
um, before getting into cyber security? Well, I would say it's a plus. Everything I say, it's always a plus. So if you know programming is good for you because there are sometimes you might need to um, run some scripting. So you don't want to be depending on the scripts other people have written. You might want to run your own scripts that will run a program or run a task faster. Okay. You might want to create your own um, codes, your own. It just really, it really, it just gives you that upper hand. It gives you that power. Okay. So it's really important if you want to. It, it's it's not compulsory, but it's a plus on your side if you know how to program. Our advice: you learn Python. Python is because Python is what they use for scripting and when hacking or when doing most of this Python, PHP, and some of these other things. So it's really important. Uh, you you know how to program at least the basics you must not know how to you must not know it in depth but getting the basics knowing how to program in python is really important when you want to get started with cyber security but it shouldn't stop you even if you decide to get started with cyber security before studying um, programming or before learning programming it's still okay it's not it's not really um, a prerequisite then I would say the second thing that helped me when getting started into cybersecurity was that I watched this particular series called Mr. Robot. It's a popular series um, airing on Netflix and Amazon Prime, I exactly. think. So what I'm this series does is yeah. it shows you real life simulations of hacking, both black hat lost. hacking, They're white hat lost. hacking, or the ethical and the, and the malicious type of hacking. It shows you everything. It gives you the terms used in hacking or in cyber security in general. So you understand what it's, I think this is like the first or the first and maybe the major series that you can see that depicts what it is to hack. Most of those movies you see where they just start typing and their fingers are moving very fast and you see and they're telling you they're hacking a computer, they're hacking this. No, those ones, this one you will see everything and why you, why you are practicing, you will even see that oh, th what was done in this movie or what was done in this series is actually um, real life hacking. It's, it depicts real life hacking. The major reason I'm kind of recommending this series for you or this movie is a series. The reason I'm recommending it for you is because at a point in time it helped me when I felt like I had given up on cyber security and I didn't want to do cyber security again. This particular series will kind of uh, motivate you to keep on going. It will motivate you and show you um, the power of knowing how to hack. It will show you the power of cyber security and it just gives you that. It just um, sparks or rekindles the flame in you. So it's important to watch that series if you want to, but it's not compulsory. It does not have anything to do with getting started, but it's something I would advise you to go ahead and watch. Okay, so for those that might be watching this video, if you are doing cyber security before and then you lost um, the zeal to do it, just go back and watch this series from the beginning or any other or any season. Trust me, you would you would go back into cyber security. It helped me a lot, and I know why I'm telling you this. Some people might say, okay, how do I get started? Do I need to start watching YouTube videos? Well, not necessarily. There are lots of YouTube videos. There are, there are some YouTube videos that are four hours, five, five hours on getting started with cyber security and all they are free resources but i wouldn't advise those um i wouldn't advise those ones you can watch those videos they are really good but if you are really serious about getting started with cyber security i would, I would advise you to get a paid course you can get a paid course on udemy coursera edx um uh, cybrary there are lots of all these uh, other platforms that that gives you real and good courses on cyber security but i would advise you use udemy this video is not sponsored in any way but udemy is what i used i got courses about three courses from a very good lecturer that helped me and i will link that in the resources so that i can go ahead and use if you want to but those uh, courses on udemy those paid cyber security courses those paid ethical hacking um, courses will help you. It will give you step by step processes. It will give you. It will tell you everything you need to know uh, in getting started with cyber security. To give you the hands on experience in getting started with cyber security because cyber security is divided into the theoretical aspects where you just know the okay. These are the policies, these are the do's and the don'ts and everything. But the technical aspect where you need to hack and you need to know how these things actually work, the part where you need to break systems and then repair systems, 
is what you will get from learning these courses okay so it's really important to get hands-on experience when it comes to cyber security so these courses on udemy will really help you a lot and the the, the advantages of these courses um to that on as opposed to that on youtube is that these courses once you purchase these courses the lecturer is already supposed to answer any question you have. So if you have a question, you can send an email to the lecturer. They will usually give you their emails. You can send a direct email to the lecturer, or you can ask it on that Udemy platform, and they would surely answer you. They have to answer you because you paid for their course. Okay, unlike YouTube, if you leave a comment, the content creator wouldn't, might not have the time to answer millions of people. And the thing is that those content creators, they have their paid courses, those people, and those paid courses are where they give their major attention to the people that paid for their courses, okay? So I would advise you to um, get paid courses on Udemy. The ones I will link are also good for you, but you can just set up um, getting started with cyber security and then, or getting started with ethical hacking. Once you search for those, you see courses, check for the ones with high ratings and you can go ahead and and use those ones but if you want the ones i use personally i will link them in the description you can go ahead and use those ones they are pretty much good another question that people usually ask me is what is the ideal computer to use when getting started in cyber security should i use a 16 gig computer a 16 gig ram computer what computer should i use? should i use a, a gaming computer well I would say if you are looking at computer to before you get started, computer using um, a high-end computer might restrict you because not everybody has the money to purchase a high-end computer. For most people, just getting started or people that have not been done undergraduate or people that are just living undergraduate that maybe they don't have a job yet how do you expect to get a high-end computer of over one thousand dollars you might not have the money to do such so make use of what you have if you have a four gig ram computer it can work it's, you can work with that okay it, it might not give you the all the functionalities you need but you can work with that i started with four, a four gig ram computer and i think a 1.8 um, gigahertz processor or two gigahertz processor i can't remember but right now i use eight gig ram and then um a two giga almost 2.2 gigahertz um processing speed so it's not the best but it's good and it works for me Okay, but if you have the money to get a high-end PC, you can get um, all this high-end Lenovo of Core i5. Don't, not just Lenovo, Lenovo is a brand on its own. You can get a HP, whatever type of computer, but you can get a Core i5, you can get a Core i7, you can get, um, and make sure it's like 16 gig RAM above, okay, 16 gig RAM above, and then um, SSD of um, maybe to i don't know if 200 and ssd or 500 gig is okay 500 gigabytes that's your storage it's okay so but that shouldn't be that shouldn't be your concern i so you you shouldn't be um thinking more about um much about uh, the computer you use but if you want a high-end computer i would recommend for those that have money i'll recommend our link one below for you to um get okay i'll just write down the name for you you can go ahead and get that one if you want to or if you have the money to get the only part that your computer might tell is when you start or when you need to get a vm a virtual machine which enables you to have lots of os on one computer or on one os okay that's the work of a virtual machine so i want to see how does an ios work how does um a windows work how does linux work so you might want to see those operating systems you might want to try attacking those operating systems just um real life uh real life testing of those things if a, virt uh, a virtual machine is what you use for those and it takes up high resources or high ram when you need to um, install those os on that virtual machine allocate resources based on the ram you have and based on the storage you have okay you you, you will see all those you you'll be put through when you get those courses you will see how to go ahead and do that so that is not really what you should be budging yourself about right now so um there's just one thing i have to also add i did it and then i think it's important uh, you can purchase a 32 gigabytes um flash drive okay the reason i said this is because for example where you cannot take your computer you can always take that flash drive the flash drive is going to be used as a bootable os okay it's just going to be where your kali linux is installed you can install your kali linux on that particular um 
flash drive because Linux OS is like the OS that most ethical hackers use. They, they use there's Parrot, there's Parrot OS, there's Ubuntu, there's um, there's Kali Linux. There are lots of other um, ones you could use, but Kali Linux is the one I use, and I would advise you to get because it's the interface is easy to understand compared to Parrot and all these other ones. Okay. So once you get it, you can install it, install the OS on that particular flash drive. So even if you are not with your computer and you go to a place where there's a computer, you can go ahead and plug the flash drive boot from that particular um, um, OS or that particular flash drive and work because your, your work is already saved on that particular flash drive. So you can always work, can always continue your hacking, can always continue your learning with that particular flash drive. I will link a video on how to set it up. If In case I forget to do so, just let me know in the comment section and then I will link a video on how to set up a bootable Kali Linux on a USB drive. Another important thing, this one is mostly important for you that is trying to get started into cybersecurity. Make sure you reach out to experts. It's really important. So where do you see these experts? Go to LinkedIn. You just need to type cybersecurity and then you see lots of experts that have lots of certifications in terms of they have CH, they have um, CYSA, they have um, CISSP. You know, they have lots of other certifications which has already proven them to be good and um, experts in this field, okay? So once you reach out to them, what you need to do is Tell them um, you want them to be your mentor. Some don't like hearing that word, but just tell them you want them to put you through in your path to um, in your path to cybersecurity because cybersecurity in US is different. I don't mean don't reach out to those in US or someone in US. Reach out to someone in Nigeria that is into cybersecurity. If you reach out to someone in the United States, except you plan on going abroad to um, do your to further your studies in cybersecurity or to work then you can do that then you can try and get the knowledge of how it works or how their own cyber security works but cyber security is the same everywhere in terms of what you learn what what works and everything but in terms of um environment uh, and then the money that they pay to those working in cyber security and everything is a bit different so i would advise you reach out to someone in nigeria and then get their contacts if the person is your age mate, you can go ahead and ask uh, for that for the personal contact like WhatsApp, WhatsApp where you can reach out to the person and then ask any question any time of the day. Most people that are experts, top experts, might not want to give you their personal number or their personal details because they wouldn't want lots of people disturbing them or sending them WhatsApp message every minute. I mean, me personally, so I wouldn't really enjoy that because if I give a thousand people my number, there's a possibility those thousand people will be sending me WhatsApp message every single moment and it could be disturbing and if i decide to ignore it it might be somehow so uh, i that might be a reason why they wouldn't want to give you that personal contact so you can just make do with the linkedin any question you have as long as the person has agreed that there's no problem reach out to the person on linkedin ask the questions you need to ask and that's it make friendship with the person you you must not start asking the person uh, can the person get you a job in cyber Sec don't do that most people don't enjoy that just the relationship should flow maybe later on when you think you're ready you can just ask them how can you get a job or something and then uh, there's the way you use sense to ask such questions so i wouldn't you know how you go about that then this is really important in terms of cyber security you must be able to study every day the reason most people cyber security is hard let me just put it this way it's hard it's not easy so you see people quitting cyber security you see people going back into it you see people um staying in it cyber security for you to get into cyber security you must be someone that is inquisitive to learn every day you must be someone that wants to know what is happening because cyber security is not like it's not like cyber security is not like medicine that once you know that if your pulse is more than 100 it means your pulse is high and there's something wrong that one is standard every day every time you know that once someone's bp is more than maybe 120 over 80 or you know that there's something wrong that one is a standard it does not change cyber security is different if they tell you that a, a computer is safe with uh, maybe if you have one antivirus it's safe 
tomorrow they can tell you that a computer with one antivirus is no longer safe because um, there's a virus that can bypass one, one antivirus on a computer. You could hear that um, this particular Windows update is no longer up to date. You could hear that there's a zero day vulnerability that exploited this, that is exploiting this particular vulnerability. So even if you updated your computer today, tomorrow it could be vulnerable. The next minute it could be vulnerable. So you need to always keep be updated. You need to keep yourself up to date. So at every point you make sure that you are learning you are always learning it's really important getting news on cyber security news what are the latest hacks though you might be seeing latest hacks about um things ha happening in other countries in america or uk but it does not matter you might not really hear hacks happening in nigeria because sometimes when hacks happen happens they are usually um slightly not disclosed or i don't know but most hacks you hear uh, is hacks that happen in America, but it does not have it does not it does not mean just go ahead and update yourself. How did this hack happen? This hack, any hack that happens in America, would definitely or can be replicated in Nigeria and will be the damage that will be done in Nigeria will be times ten of what it was in America. So it it applies the same thing applies. So you must always be willing to learn, 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 read, study what is new in cyber security every day you must make your research after learning the basics of cyber security by getting the courses and maybe the youtube videos you are watching the next thing to do is just to keep yourself busy and just to make sure you're working on a sort of project because if you're not busy if you're not if there's not something you are aiming towards achieving it's cyber security is just going to be irritating for you so there should be you should um go into or start doing ctfs what they call capture the flags okay go ahead and watch youtube videos on capture the flags in cyber security and what it entails or what it means in general we're giving the general knowledge on capture the flag but it's important you you um do any capture the flag there's hack the box dot eu there's immersive labs dot online um there are so many other capture the flag um platforms you could use online they will really help you to keep yourself working to keep yourself it's, it's more like a game there are lots of people trying to get flags trying to get points that will leave them up on the ladder some even pay money or some get money there's also what they call bug bounty where you try to um find vulnerabilities in websites and all those ones so that one but that that one is not for now when you're if you're getting started you don't really have any business with those okay that one is for later it's just to keep you busy and to make sure you're always occupied but for now i wouldn't don't disturb yourself about capture the flags or about um, bug bounty that you shouldn't be concerned about that i'm sure you might have heard about that but don't be concerned about that for now then this is the major one which most people always ask me cyber security in nigeria is it lucrative how much are those that are working there paid okay so even before the paying part the, there's, a, there's a question that people usually ask where can i work or where where can i see a job in cyber security are there jobs available in cyber security well yes there are jobs available in cyber security or for a cyber security rule in nigeria though it might not be as popular as um, software development and all this other graphic design and all this but there are jobs available and because there are lesser people in the field in nigeria so if there, there's a high possibility that once you know what you are doing you will land the job and they always pay well for if you know how to and begin and if you now to um sell yourself they pay they pay pretty much or they pay well for a cyber security rule i think i will do another video on um, the organizations that you could most likely get a job in cyber security but this video is not for that so that we don't waste time so getting a job in cyber security in nigeria could be pretty tough because one there are not so many people that um there are not so many jobs available like that there are jobs available but there are not many like that in terms of cyber security so most people you see studying cyber security here in nigeria is because they have plan of oh in the next one year after i'm done with this study or in the next four years after i'm done with my undergraduate i plan on going abroad to do cyber security full time i'm not going to be based in nigeria some want to stay in nigeria so there are different people have different um, plans so for those that want to stay in nigeria you can get a job in nigeria it's it's not difficult but one thing I want you to take, take note of is that if you are new, if you are just coming out of the university and then you've not gotten any work experience, 
don't expect to see okay you want to get um maybe a job as a cyber security analyst a job as a penetration tester a job as a this that you might not see any job like that in nigeria or when you just leave you might not see something even if you see such jobs you might not just get those jobs because you are not ready so what most what i would advise you most times is that you can the first year of leaving your university the first year or your, your first ever job can be um an it support kind of job or a network and security sort of job networking job okay in the sense that you know what a router is you know what a firewall is you know all those basic networking stuff so when you get job a job in it support you most likely get the knowledge of all those things so i advise you get the not get get the job no matter what the job is but it should be an it type of job stay there one year two years get that experience because work experience matters if you are going to except you are getting an entry role which is most likely what you might get you if you are if you are getting anything more than an entry role you must have gotten work experience somewhere and if you don't have work experience you don't expect they, you don't expect them to pay you much and you don't expect them to even get uh, to take you in, in the first place except you are very good except you are very exceptional so go for it support jobs go for network administrator jobs those people that um, handle windows updates handle all these sort of updates and all and i personally when i the, my first or my job when i took the job it was tag network and security in 10 but uh, i was i thought i was going to be doing the things i saw in cyber security or maybe majorly hacking and all but that was not what i was doing it was i should i say it was a bank in the first place so if if it's a bank uh, you might not do much of all this cyber security stuff you might just be even if they write no matter how they want to quote the title and maybe you see um cyber security analyst or whatever if it depends on the place if it's some place like a bank you might just be doing general it support or network administrator sort of um rule so it might not be what you expect or what you are seeing those americans say um it is but just st get started with that get started take the job but have a target have an aim that okay maybe after one year with them two years with them i have to move to the major thing which i want to do i have to move to this uh, this place or you can still decide not to take such jobs and then still keep searching but uh, there are, you can on link but on linkedin you will see you see those jobs on cyber security you see cyber security analysts you see um, penetration testers needed you see those jobs on linkedin you see them on um, all these other job platforms okay so you just need to search and search you surely find and when you find it, it's usually lucrative they don't pay them small money especially those that are in management parts of cyber security so i guess that is all i guess i've covered everything in terms of getting started this is just my experience as a person okay lots of people have different other experiences i would love to also hear people's experiences sadly i wish i could get someone that is working in all these major places in cyber security to sit down with me and maybe i will consider doing that i'll look for someone that is working in all these major cyber security place um companies or organizations and then get them to tell me how their everyday life is or how their, their life as a life as um how do they see it life as a cyber security stuff i don't know, I don't know how they see it as so maybe they'll just i'll just do an interview with one of them and they will tell us how it is or how or what exactly they do that typical day and how it goes so i guess that will give you more insight but to get started nothing should restrict you just make sure you are someone that is willing to learn daily and learn every single minute because things change in cyber security so i guess that's all i have for you for those that stayed to the end of this video go ahead and leave a like subscribe to this channel subscribe to cyber safe um teach online safety digital safety expose lots of scams and then i post some other tutorials and things that i just want to share I do that on this channel so go ahead and subscribe leave a like watch these videos which you can see on your screen i will see you in my next video thank you and stay safe